Hey guys, it's Marty and welcome to Two Line Slot Cars. Over the last few months during the live stream on Tuesday nights, I've had the question about slot car racing classes. I think the confusion is a lot of guys want to buy slot cars, but they don't know what class a particular car might qualify for because they don't really understand slot car classes. I've had a lot of people ask me if I would make a video explaining slot car classes. And this is a difficult video to do because every club is different. This video is going to be really a lot of general information and it probably will only be accurate based on the clubs that I've raced at personally. So, so I'm hoping that the real conversation an explanation of classes happens in the comment section and we continue this conversation. But let's dive in to slot car classes. So when we talk about slot car classes, guys, it can be anything under the sun, really. There's a lot of options out there and every, every club is different. So it really depends on brands of cars and uh, styles of cars and magnet versus non-magnet and the sky is the limit. I really don't want to confuse people, but I know that my buddy John Mark, he picks up a car and says, I love this car. What class is this? Well, this one's pretty obvious. It's, it's Formula One, right? But he might pick up this and that's a tougher question. What, what really does this car, this is a prototype. What class does this car fit in, right? So let's let's talk about, at a basic level, slot car classes are formed around real classes in the racing world. And so let's just kind of start at the beginning. Slot cars became very popular in the 60s, and the cars that were running at the time in the 60s that were super popular were Le Mans cars, right? So let's start with the vintage class. A lot of clubs out there run vintage cars, vintage class cars, or maybe they call them Can-Am cars, or maybe they call them Le Mans classes. So these would be cars that, that ran at Le Mans in the 60s and early 70s, maybe between, I don't know, 1960, say 63, 67 to 74. And so we call that Can-Am or we call it vintage, and that's where the confusion happens because... There were lots of different cars that ran in those classes. FIA, who sanctions a lot of races, um, they've moved these group names or these category names, and they've changed them over the years. And so that that gets really confusing as well. So um, it's Lola T70s, McLaren M6As, um, in M6Bs, MABs, right? Uh, the Chaparral, the Ford GTs, and cars that were built on four GT bases, right? Uh, the Porsche 908, the 917K, the 917 k and even later, the Shadow uh, DN4A. There were lots of different cars. And so a lot of times they just say, anything that ran at Le Mans in those early days between 1960 and 1974, or 1958 and 1974. And so Lotuses and everything in between, Ferraris, right? All those popular cars, they all fit in that vintage class. Companies that make cars for that class, NSR, Slot It, Thunder Slot, Carrera, Fly, Monogram, most companies make these cars and the style of cars because they're super popular. And so it's a very popular class. It's a very competitive class at my club. Um, where we go at Cincy Slots, I mean, everybody's got their Can-Am cars tuned and they're ready to run. And we're running like 50 laps in, you know, seven minute races. And it's super competitive. It might be one of my favorite classes to race. And then you move into uh, group two. Now group two is kind of a newer slot car to the scene right now because Revo slot is releasing a ton of group two cars, but group two kind of ran from like 59 to 1981 group two Lots of cars rolled through that class. But at the club level, it seems to be cars that were between, they were like the saloon cars, um, the British cars, um, the European Touring Car Challenge, 63 to 67. The Japanese domestic cars are pretty popular in that class too. So you have like the Ford Escort, you have the BMW, um, Alfa Romeo, Datsun, Opel Cadet. Those are all Group 2 cars. They're a much smaller car. They're based on... 
um, street cars. And that is a class that's probably growing because of Revo Slot and releasing those cars here recently. So uh, gr- that's Group 2. Slot it also makes some Group 2 cars. There are other companies. Um, BRM is doing some 124 scale uh, Group 2 cars. So it's pretty exciting to see that class grow. It's super competitive from a slot car standpoint. I, I see that that is a, is a class that's going to really grow over the next couple of years. Let's talk about Group 5. Group 5 is a class of cars that, that ran a very long time. But when you talk about Group 5 slot cars, it's really that middle group of Group 5, like the 76 through 82, that fourth generation of Group 5 cars. Um, they're all based on production cars. Um, they're all highly modified. Um, with large fenders so that they can make the cars wider and widen the track of those cars so they become better race cars. They were Group 5 was all about horsepower as well. And so you've got the Porsche 935, you got the BMW 320i, you have the Toyota Celica, the Nissan Skyline, the Mazda RX-7, uh, the Lancia Stratos, the Beta Monte Carlo, the Ferrari 512BB, um, and then the Ford Capris, the Mustangs, the Zack Speed cars. Those are all group five cars. That is a very popular uh, slot car class. There are two companies, three companies that really focus on making group five cars. Sideways, um, they make a lot of group five cars. It's kind of the core of their collection of cars. And then Carrera makes a lot of group five cars. And then you can find some fly classic cars um, that are in group five. Very popular class. Cars, slot cars perform really well. And then we move into Trans Am. Um, at my club, we run modified Trans Am. Um, basically, that is the SCCA class of cars from 66 to 74. It's the Camaros, the Mustangs, the Javelins, the Firebirds, the Cougars, the Challengers, the, the Barracudas. Um, those were all in that Trans Am class. But a lot of clubs run modified in the Trans Am because... Those cars made by Pioneer or Skelectrix or Carrera, SCX is another company that makes um, a lot of those cars because they make the Cuda and the Challenger. Th- those cars are a little top heavy. And so a lot of times guys really experiment with those cars and they do 3D printed chassis and brass chassis and, and lots of things to try to make those cars perform better. So a lot of times that Trans Am class is a modified class. And at our club, it's like it's the car you throw a bunch of money at because uh, you've got to spend a little bit of money to make those cars really go. So then we move into Group C. Now, Group C um, has, has had a lot of light shined on it here lately because the USA Nationals at Electric Dreams, that's sponsored by Slot It, that's what cars they race for that, that USA Nationals. The Group C class of cars... That class ran between 82 and 93 for about 11 years. And the interesting thing about that class is the Group C, they were trying to slow down the horsepower race. That class of cars, uh, they ran restrictions on fuel and how much fuel you could use for an endurance race. And so that's what they were trying to control the horsepower because these cars got really, really fast. I mean, they were so fast that they became almost as popular as Formula One cars because of their performance was was that good. And so um, they became very popular in the world endurance racing. And by 1989, I mean, it was as popular as Formula One. Um, this class of slot car is very popular um, because of the time frame. And so like with my age group, a lot of us got to see these cars on TV, watch them race on ESPN. And and so we we're really familiar with the liveries of these cars. And it's one of my favorite slot cars uh, are Group C cars. But you had the Porsche 956 and the 962. You had different versions of that. You had the Lancia. You had the Mercedes. Um, you had the Jaguar. You had uh, Nissan, Toyota jumped in, Mazda, the 787B. Uh, that's a, a great car. Sounds amazing on the track. Um, even Aston Martin jumped into that class. Um, super popular. BRM makes a 124 scale version of the car. Slot It uh, is really the, the main manufacturer of 132nd scale Group C cars. You can find some other manufacturers that do um, one or two offs. Fly made a few, and some other companies made a few. Um, but really, Slot It is the uh, the main company that that does a lot of Group C cars. And still to this day, they're producing Group C cars. They released six new Group C cars this year, I think. The next class is a class that I think is just very generic. They call it GT. It's a difficult to talk about the history because GT has meant a lot of different things um, 
GT stands for Grand Touring, and and over the years, it, it's been classified on lots of different circuits, GT1, GT2, GT3, GTP, GTD, um, and so on. So um, it might be the broadest class of slot cars. Uh, most clubs will probably race those GT cars in brand. Um, so this year, Cincy Slots is doing a Revo Slot GT class. I know that uh, we've been a part of other other uh, races where they've raced GT cars and um, Scale Auto uh, GT cars, uh, Sideways GT cars, Revo Slot, Sideways, NSR, Fly, Scale Auto, MR Slot Car, Carrera, Scale Electrics. I mean, everyone is making GT cars. And so it's really difficult to put those in a class and they're continuing to make these GT cars today. And so a lot of the current cars that are racing on the circuits now fall into that GT class. So you'll see clubs do a lot of things where they race in brand, or maybe they pick out a specific um, GT1 or GT2 or GT3 class. Um, I don't know. There's lots of different ways you can tackle the GT racing class, but it's very broad. Lots of slot car companies involved in making GT cars. You have Ford GTs, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, BMWs, Mercedes. The list goes on. So I would refer to your club's rules when you're looking at GT racing and what qualifies and what they allow because there's a lot of uh, a lot of great cars out there that can be competitive with each other. There's a lot of other cars that just won't compete with an NSR or a Sideways or a Slotted or an MR Slot car or a Scale Auto. I mean, I, I think that there's just a wide range when it comes to GT. One of the other smaller classes that's becoming popular because of, I think, Carrera is making them very popular is the DTM. And that's kind of like the German version of NASCAR, I think. Um, I don't know a lot about DTM cars, but I know Carrera makes a lot of DTM cars. Slot it makes some DTM cars. But that's a, that's a German racing series. Audi, BMW, uh, Mercedes, Carrera and Slotted are really the two companies that I see making DTM cars. The digital classes um, could be popular for DTM, uh, people who have you know Carrera digital um, digital tracks. So I could see that as a as a popular uh, digital car to race because you have a lot of options when it comes to liveries from Carrera. Um, and then you have some really smaller classes that are probably regional, like like Legend cars have become very popular, and Pioneer is really the only company that's making Legend cars. But Legend cars are sort of like those Group 2 cars. They're a little smaller. They, they're they a lot of fun to drive. Um, it's a little slower slot car, but it's a super competitive class. So you have Legends. Um, you have Formula 1 um, with the new NSR Formula 1s. Um, you have Vintage Formula 1, which is a lot of the Policar Vintage Formula One cars, current Formula One, you have 96 to 98 NSRs. There, so there's some subclasses in all of these classes, um, but especially in the Formula One class. And then there are classes that are just brands, right? Um, you have Ninko and you have Fly and you have all these other slot car companies. And a lot of clubs will just pick their favorite company and say you can run any fly and have a class built around all the fly cars and it's open to no matter doesn't matter what the body style is it's just any fly car qualifies um, a lot of times those will be run a spec where you use the spec motor um, or or the stock motor you, maybe the only thing you can do is change the tires and fix the guide right you can't do any other tuning uh, so those are some of the things that you'll see in some of those other clubs that it's specific to brand. And then we can talk about um, magnetic classes and magnetic downforce. You know, maybe it's, it's a 250 gram of magnetic downforce allowed in a class. And maybe you can run Fly and Ninko, Monogram, and some of the older slot cars. That's It all depends on the club. Um, a lot of times it depends on what people have and what kind of cars they own. And so a lot of clubs create classes that, that help out they're, they're people, right? They race cars that they already own so that they're, so they don't have to buy new cars all the time. That's kind of just a basic overview of, of classes at the club level. Again, we haven't even touched commercial tracks and 124 scale racing where they have the Womps and the Formula One and they have cars that don't even look like cars, the big wing cars. So we're not even talking about that. I'm, I'm focused on the, the 132nd scale hard-bodied, hobbyist-grade cars, right? That is kind of the overview. That is really a base level, very generic. 
I'm sure I made some mistakes in this video. I'm sure that there will be people who want to correct some of the things I say. And please do down in, in the comments. Like, please use this video as a way to help other people understand. But going back to my, my buddy, John Mark, he grabs a car and says, what class is this? And I'll, I'll go group C. And he just shakes his head because he's like, how do you remember all this stuff? And, and it's, it makes sense to some people, but classes, sometimes they don't make sense to people. And so I'm hoping that this video sort of gives you a, a broad idea of what slot car classes are out there. And I'm sure that I missed a bunch and list them in the comments. So if you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified anytime I put out new content. It, I really, I want to create things that are helpful to people. I want to help the hobby. I don't want to hurt the hobby. If there's something I said wrong, please correct me. Not a big deal. But I, I hope that for those of you who have been asking that question in my live stream, I really did want to follow up with you. And I thought it was easier just to do a video. A few people asked for me to do a video. So, um, so here it is. And I hope you liked it. And you know what? Go have some fun racing. Mm -hmm.